Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we are doing plant myths. So this is episode I don't even remember at this point, where we go through all 17 essential nutrients for plants, counting our way down to Christmas. So plant myths is my knockoff of vlogmas. Let's just jump straight into it. So today's video is about oxygen and this is going to be one of those short and sweet videos because there is not much to say however it is still considered an essential nutrient. Now before you go and say well wait I thought plants give off oxygen. They do. Oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis. That is how we get the oxygen we breathe However, it also is needed for photosynthesis and plant growth. So oxygen in plants is a very fancy word. Oxidative phosphorylation is the, the use of oxygen or the byproduct of oxygen in plants. And oxygen, it, the only way that plants can get it is through H2O. So it is taken up by the roots, not by the stomata. We'll talk about a different element that is taken up by the stomata, but oxygen is taken up in the form of H2O. That means that you don't have to fertilize for oxygen, it just has to be present in the soil. Now, keep in mind that soil in general should be aerated and should be aerobic, meaning have presence of oxygen, not the absence of oxygen, to help with regular microbial processes. And therefore, if we add too much water or too much H2O, it's not a good thing because we end up with an anaerobic soil. That means a soil that doesn't have enough oxygen to support plants. Now there is ways to add oxygen and I'm sure we're all familiar with the way that we add oxygen that is through aeration. So this can be in the plunger type that actually goes down, grabs a bit of soil and pulls it out of the root depth zone, usually about two to three inches or a plunger form that actually compacts the soil in certain areas, allowing oxygen to then, or air just in general, to get to the roots through a puncture wound. But I think it's kind of important when we talk about the element of oxygen to actually look at just poor structure in soil in general. So every soil, even soilless medium, has a structure to it. Some structures are different than others, but overall it's made up of inorganic, organic, gases, nutrients, and water. So there's four kind of components that make up the pore space. Some may or may not have organic material in it. Some may or may not have inorganic material in it. The organic or the inorganic material is kind of the bones of the structure. So when I say organic, I mean coconut coir, cocoa bar, peat moss, that sort of thing. That is sphagnum moss. Those are all organic forms of soil structure or soilless medium in that case. And then inorganic forms would be sand, silt, and clay. The components of these will differ wildly based on either your potting soil mix or what's in the ground outdoors, your parent material, any amendments you've added, that sort of thing. The smaller the particles, such as a clay or a silt particle, the smaller the actual pore space. And so when we get really small pore space within our bone, our structure of the soil, we end up with lower volumes of oxygen and water that can be contained within each pore, but more pores in general. And so long as those pores are open, the volume of pores is open and can support uh, equal amounts of nutrient water and air, we end up with a healthy soil. Now keep in mind that the uh, smaller pores can actually go against gravity in a lot of cases. Through capillary action, they have the ability to both hold water and nutrients tightly and often through droughts or through times where nutrient or water may not be accessible. However, if we have larger pore spaces, something that we would see in a chunky potting soil mix with lots of cocoa bar, sandy or pebbly soil, we end up with really big pore space that don't, they're not able to work against capillary action. They only have one form of mechanism in order to hold on to that water and unfortunately it's gravity and gravity doesn't support that water actually staying suspended in that soil system so it ends up dropping out. 
So if you are an overwaterer, this is a good thing. If you are an underwaterer, this is a bad thing. And therefore, technically, you can end up with an oxygen deficiency because remember, the only way that plant can uptake oxygen is via water, not through oxygenated air. It can't fix oxygen out of the air. It has to be in the form of H2O. Now, there is, uh, you know, lots of videos out there saying you should use hydrogen peroxide to add water and kind of the bubbles or the way that you get the oxygen. And unfortunately, gas forms of oxygen very rarely are going to stay in a soil structure regardless of if it has macro pores or micro pores because the moment water is added to that system, the air or the gas is just going to be forced out and aerated out into the atmosphere. So the pores don't have the ability to actually hold on or contain gas in any way, shape or form. So that's kind of the unfortunate part there. So oxygen is so important to a plant, it actually makes up 45% of the entire plant's biomass, which is absolutely insane considering how many other nutrients are in that profile. So that does make oxygen a primary macro nutrient and uh, it is responsible for nearly everything, every single process within the plant. But like I said, the oxygen video is going to be super duper short and we're already done. What we need to remember is that the oxygen is uptaken in the form of H2O. So allowing our plants to dry out to a bone dry, to a point that is bone dry or a permanent wilting point is a never a good thing because we are then, we do have an oxygen deficiency in that case. And we are therefore compromising 45% of that entire biomass. But on the other hand, an anaerobic soil will cause damage to the roots and ultimately cause an oxygen deficiency as well because it cannot be uptaken. And of course, the pore space within our soil is important. And you want a mixture between micro and macro porosity. Now there is some new verbiage out there such as um, biopores. And what they're referring to in that sense is a macro pore that has been formed by dead material or insect activity within the soil. So that could be an earthworm chewing its way through and leaving a macro pore of sorts or it could be a root that has grown into a space and then decomposed and died off. But ultimately, oxygen is a primary macronutrient that is incredibly important, cannot be added in any form. There's no fertilizer out there, including hydrogen peroxide. I did a whole video on that. Go check that out if you wanna learn more. But yes, that is one of the 17 essential plant nutrients. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you even thought of oxygen as a plant nutrient, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.